Hi, this is Josh with Retro TV One Tech, and today I'm really excited. We're going to be unboxing a brand new package of double density 720K floppy disks. These have been in the package probably since 1989, maybe 1990, early 90s, I don't know, but it's super exciting to uh, be able to check these out, unbox them. You can see that they are completely sealed, shrink-wrapped from the factory, so who knows when these left the factory, but they've been boxed up for well over 20 years, and we are going to set them free and put them to good use here in uh, my Tandy 1000 TL2, which only takes 720K floppies. It doesn't have that high-density 1.44 meg floppy drive, so I'm super excited to get these out and transfer some games over here and have some fun. So, if you're new to Retro TV One, please be sure to hit that red subscribe button right below the video, hit the notification bell, and hit the like, leave us a comment, you know all the things. But anyway, let's jump right into the video. So I got these on eBay, and uh, I have plenty of 1.44 meg high density floppies for use with the external floppy drive that I bought for my main PC, but I didn't have any 720K. So I looked on eBay and found these, and uh, since they were already shrink wrapped and had not ever been used, I just thought it would be super cool to uh, unbox something that had never been used before that's been in the box like I said for over 20 years so super cool to uh, be able to unbox these and um, and check them out but who remembers walking into a Walmart or a Radio Shack or a Best Buy or whatever stores were around at the time and just buying floppy disks you know 3M Imation was a very common brand of disk back then they also had Verbatim and uh, several other brands I think BASF and um, I'm trying to think of some of the other Memorex had floppy disks and things but um, you know, so these are pretty cool and um, definitely excited to check these out. They are pre-formatted. It says formatted IBM. So I'm not sure if you would be able to use them on another system. But uh, either way, I shouldn't have to format these. We'll see uh, if they work without being formatted or not. But either way, without any further ado, let's get started with the unboxing. These have been in the box for over 20 years, maybe even 30 years. I'm not sure, but here we go. Wow, it almost feels wrong, but we're gonna use these and we're gonna use them well. We're gonna put some amazing games on these and uh, they're gonna finally be put to good use and be able to, uh, to store data. So there they go. The shrink wrap is off. It's pretty incredible. All right, so it looks like, um, if I remember correctly, they've got this uh, perforation here and uh, it just kind of flips open from there and then it bends in the back yeah so okay so what we do is we perforate that there we go i don't want to demolish the box i want to be careful here but this is so cool there we go yeah that's it okay can't imagine you know just again what was going on when these were when these were created and when this box was was filled uh, what was going on in the world at that point in time you know who was the president and you know what were the current events like and all kinds of different things that just going through my mind what was pc technology like at the time and we, we obviously know that um you know things were very different than they are now but so here they are let me grab one out of here here real quick all right let me see they're kind of oh i see they must be like wrapped together Wow, that's really, really cool. Looks like we've got uh, French here. So, okay, so they are wrapped together with this uh, little tape here. We get that off of there and then we'll, ah, here we go. Looks like I can unwrap it from the, from the back here. There we go. So now they are completely and totally unboxed. Don't you love when those clingy plastics cling to your hand like that? wonder if there are oh I see it's this is like a reflective screen cover uh, advertisement for for a glass uh, CRT monitor cover and it looks like oh there we go there's the English version do you have a glaring problem with eye strain <laughs> polarizing filters today's busy eyes deserve a rest it's pretty cool and here are the discs themselves this is what we were after a close-up here view the camera will focus nicely there. Turn that back over. So there you go. 720K. Pretty cool. And again, these have never seen the light of day, or at least not seen the light of day. I shouldn't say never. They haven't seen the light of day for well over 20 years. So that's pretty amazing. So we're going to get some games copied on these, and we are going to see how they work. 
before we copy the games over, let's see what else is in the package. I remember getting these brand new boxes of discs a long time ago and maybe it was not a, too big of a deal to most people, but you got the diskette helpline. I wonder what happens if you call that. <laughs> Probably nobody answers. So, oh, and I see this has actually got a um, protective cover on the side here. So let's open that and we'll get into the uh, instruction manual here. So usually not super exciting, but looks like this might be the label packet. Yep, there you go. So there, won't make you dizzy there, but there are some brand new 3M Imation labels. That's pretty neat. Brand new, clean, never been written on or labeled in any way. Uh, it even has an icon for locked and unlocked, so that is pretty cool. Let's see what else is in here. Looks like there might be one more piece of paper in here. Something about Compaq. Oh, that's interesting. Let's see what this is. Compaq. Revolutionary capacity. Compaq LS120. 120 megabyte drive. That might have been, must have been a competitor to a zip drive. All in a drive that's very familiar. That's interesting. So I wonder if this is a drive that can play or can read both regular floppies and um, high density discs as well. I'm not sure. That's that's actually an interesting uh, an interesting idea there. Okay, so wow, backward compatible. The first internal floppy to handle your 1.44 megabyte diskettes as easily as 120 megabyte. It's kind of uh, interesting that these didn't catch on. I, I didn't know anything about these. Wow. A cool advertisement so imation must have been advertising this or 3m looks like that's just the one page there must have been advertising those because um, of the fact that uh, they made the media for it and it looks like they had a website at the time so this must have been the 90s then that these were made so uh, so yeah so maybe like 20 25 years then that these were packaged up but still it's pretty cool but yeah it's interesting to see a website in a uh, box of uh, 720k floppy disks. So, all right, so we're gonna copy some stuff over to these and have some fun. And before we do that, I'm gonna check the formatting here in the Tandy 1000. So let's get that booted up. So satisfying how quickly it boots. There we go, it's already ready. So here we are in DOS, and let's put one of these disks in the drive for the first time and see how they work. So here we go. Should just be blank, but hopefully it reads it. Okay, let's just do a quick directory. Okay, file not found, but at least it appears that it is pre-formatted because there's no label, but there's nothing on it. So that's good. All right, so now we're time to copy things over. First things first, I'm just gonna try a very, very small game here. I'm just gonna try a Castle Adventure. So we're gonna copy that over here to the floppy. Right over here. That should just copy right over. It's kind of funny on this modern PC seeing all of uh, the data move so slowly. All right, here we go. So going in the Tandy and hopefully we'll be able to get some files here. I know it's a little dark because I've got the ISO set so that the screen looks nice, but either way, I'm gonna go for a directory. It doesn't have to be wide because there's not that much on the disc. And hopefully it worked. It sure did. Awesome, oh my goodness. So I gotta load, I'm gonna cap copy Castle to the hard drive, but I've gotta just go ahead and load it from here. If anybody knows this amazing game, Castle Adventure by Kevin Bale, so it was like, such an important game in my childhood because it was one of the first that I played that really had multiple screens and multiple levels and rooms, like I think 83 or 88 rooms to walk through and uh, so many treasures and things to discover. It really made my imagination run wild. And you can see it's so small, uh, just uh, 72 kilobytes for the uh, execute file and 48 kilobytes for the, um, the data file. So here we go. Should have a little music track here.
and you get the nice little message there. So I always wonder if uh, you send a donation there to that uh, particular address, uh, who gets it? I don't think Kevin probably lives there anymore, and that's probably not his phone number, but so cool. Apparently he was uh, 14 years old when he wrote this, and I think it was written mostly in basic, so... to play. I for instructions. Let's go with P to play. Obviously it's a little faster if you use it on a hard disk, but there we go. Oh my goodness. Wow. So cool to actually play this on a DOS machine. It's been years since I played this on a real DOS computer and the graphics are perfect. Uh, you know, when you play it on DOS box and when you play it, there's a Windows version of this and it's just not quite exactly the same, but this is so cool. I'm curious too, real quick, if, you know, when I go in, sometimes this is actually a little faster PC um, than, you know, the original IBM XT was 4.77 megahertz, and this one is actually um, 8 megahertz, so it's uh, almost double. So sometimes that makes the monsters go a little fast, so let's see what happens when we go in here. This snake is probably going to come really fast, but I think I still... Okay, so it looks like I was still able to kill the snake, so that's cool, but it's neat just looking at this like, oh, this is a castle garden, and it really just makes your imagination run wild, you know, when you're playing around with this, so, um, so anyway, I'll have to do a long play video on this particular game, but uh, just playing this on a PC, even especially on a floppy disk, just makes me so happy. You can see there's a little bit of load time between rooms there, because we are on that floppy disk, but I'm surprised it doesn't load it all into memory, but it may be expecting the system to have less than the 640k that it actually does so anyway head out here of course we can't get out because we have to get the scepter but all right let's check out the next game typed in the commands here to make the copy i made a castle directory and now we're gonna make the copy i always love doing the start out star it's just so much fun There you go, four files copied. Next game we're gonna work with is Keen 4, Commander Keen 4. And I had the EGA version of this on here in my first Tandy unboxing video, but as you saw in that video, if you watched it, if not, you can go back and check it out. But uh, of course, this machine doesn't have EGA graphics. It's a modified or enhanced CGA. And so of course it didn't work. And I, I it took me a little while to realize that, but that is why it didn't work. So I'm clearing out that directory of the EGA files and I'm also deleting all of the files on the floppy so that, um, you know, because the castle, we don't need those anymore. So let's copy the Keen 4 files. I've got a Tandy version of Keen 4. There's a CGA version as well, but this is an enhanced Tandy CGA version that has the full 16 colors on it that somebody has made. So I'm gonna copy that over and we'll check it out. So you can see over here, this is the uh, game files folder and you can actually see TGA graph CK4. So that's pretty cool. And this should be all the files we need. So we're gonna copy those over here and it should be a little bit longer. So um, just love that floppy drive noise. Commander Keen files copied. Love that disk noise here. So let's go for a directory. Make sure the files made it over okay. Looks like they did. Cool. So we're going to copy these to the Keen folder and give it a try. And there it goes. Got all the files copied, and we are going to try this. So it's Keen for T. T for Tandy. And it should have the Tandy three voice sound on here too. So we'll see how that works. But I'm super excited. I've never seen Keen for on a Tandy, so here we go. Oh, there we go. It's got Tandy detected, Tandy sound, Tandy graphics, that looks like everything's good. Wanted to get a better, little better shot of that with a better exposure, so you can see that just a little bit better there. I don't have a joystick, so it's just keyboard and mouse right now. I need to get a joystick here. It looks like we've got enough memory, hopefully, to make this happen, so let's do it.
There it goes. Oh my goodness, it's so beautiful. Alright, so let's try a new game here. Try easy mode, why not? Oh, that's working really, really nicely. Fills up the whole screen, too. Oh, it takes a little bit more time on this computer. Yep, you, you can definitely hear. Alright. Okay, I'm not sure exactly. There we go. <laughs> that was a little weird green anomaly there. Let me see if I can get my buttons here. So there's no music track, but the graphics look really nice, and it's actually with this 8 megahertz processor, it works really, really, really well. Sorry about that, I was fighting with the exposure a little bit, I've got it set to manual now. So there are little graphical glitches where he kind of disappears every once in a while, so you can tell it's not, like, in final form, I guess, maybe, or something, but it definitely works. It's really cool. Such a great game, too. Oop, and he disappeared. It's a strange graphical oddity. I do want to get a Tandy joystick at some point. Oh, I want to die here. <laughs> Just let him hop over me. Why not? I didn't go in any of the special areas, but... Yeah, definitely some graphical glitching here, but it's working. It really looks just like the EGA version to me. And yeah, the character does disappear sometimes. That is slightly concerning, but still works really, really nicely. So I think if I hit escape, I should be able to save the game. Awesome. All right. Oh, well, we got to call it Josh. Leave me a comment. What did you call your save game? Did you call it your own name or did you like make up something creative or did you have a name for it every time? Let me know in the comments what you called your save games on your old computer or even on your current computer. All right, so we can quit for now, quit to DOS. There we go. That is so cool. So glad that works. So one thing I discovered when I was playing around with this computer is that it actually has an extra hard drive. Now I, I know, you know, all these Tandys with the ROM, they have this D drive. And it's basically a ROM drive, and it's got these files on it. Um, and, you know, these are all burned into ROM. They can't be changed, and you can see it says zero bytes free. You've got Deskmate. If you type desk.com, it goes right into Deskmate. It's super quick because it's reading from ROM uh, and things like that. So pull the exposure down. There we go. So, yeah, so that works really, really nicely. But I just started playing around with it the other day, and I thought to myself, you know, there's got to be maybe a different hard drive on here because if you go to the C drive and you, you get a directory you're gonna see that um, there are 23 megabytes free but I was like I wonder I know this is DOS 3.3 and it has a limitation of 32 megabytes but this is a 40 meg hard disk same hard disk we had on the computer when I was growing up and I thought well I wonder if there's an E drive and by golly there is I was so shocked when I discovered this the other day um, and there's like 8 megabytes in this particular partition. So I'm wondering, when I was younger, if we didn't know that our computer had an extra disk for that extra eight megabytes of space that we didn't even use, and we thought the computer's hard disk was full probably, and we had eight megabytes left. So there's several games in here, lots of fun stuff uh, that we can check out. One of my favorite classics here is Wheel of Fortune. Uh, you know, it's a, um, I believe it's a uh, monochrome game, but it's just such a fun, fun game to play. And if you remember these um, these games, Family Feud and Wheel of Fortune, I believe both made by the same people. Uh, and when you type when you type in menu, is how you actually get the uh, the game to start. So this is a pretty cool discovery I found. Uh, not in monochrome, I'm sorry. It's, a, it's got CGA graphics. You go, Vanna. I'm trying to figure out how to record this, you know, these monitors a little bit better. I think I'm doing better with, uh, I'm doing some manual control on the camera. So let me know in the comments if you have any other suggestions. I want to make it as good as possible. So you can go through here and pick your players. Oh, I'm a returning champ. Yes, I am. And I'm going to go down here and you know, I haven't played that much, but there you go. I don't know why I thought this was monochrome, but. So cool. All right, so here we go. 
let's at least spin at least once. And you can hear, I'm gonna turn up the speaker. You can hear a little bit. I'm gonna spin, you can, you'll hear the spinning noise. T. Of course there's a T. How many are there though? That's the question. Two. So much fun. There we go. Actually, it's a little better color if I go even just a little bit lower on the exposure. So let's spin one more time just for fun. Yeah, the image is pretty clear on here if I do that. So I'm learning. All right. Uh, we got to do R, right? Every time on Wheel of Fortune, they'd pick R-S-T-L-N-E, I believe. So anyway, all right. So we're going to quit that, and uh, we'll check out a couple other games. So one of the things that I noticed on this hard drive, um, some of the different programs on here, this Mick Don is Mickey and Donald, uh, and then Goofy's uh, some kind of a train game, pretty classic DOS games. I don't remember the exact names right now off the top of my head. Carmen San Diego, all these types of things. So, But when I go into, and of course Sierra, you know, got some great games in here but when I go into these directories and try and run the games it wants the original disk so the copyright protection is still there uh, so that's a little bit frustrating so if I type in SQ for Space Quest please insert your original disk and I'm like oh man <laughs> so I'll need to figure out a way to get that or uh, just to get different versions of them and King's Quest does the same thing several of these other games do the same thing as well but, but there's some there's some cool stuff on here uh, test drive. That's another one real quick. Let's check that out. Uh, I was super excited to see that. This is the, uh, I think if I just type TD. Yeah. So we actually have to do um, the n mode one CGA because there isn't a Tandy mode on this one. So you get that beautiful magenta here in a second. fun times. Right, here we go. Let's get into this. Gotta love those old Lamborghinis. Well, I guess they probably still do that with the doors, though. That was like, you know, when we were kids, it's like the coolest car in the world. I think it still is a pretty darn cool car. Wonder how much a 1989 Lamborghini is now. You get that beautiful magenta palette there. Shift it into gear, and here we go. Kind of hard to do with one hand, but I don't want to blow the engine, but it's a pretty fun game to play for sure. The idea is to get the highest, you know, top average top speed and the, the best uh, the best time as well. Of course, the problem is you have to pass these cars and then you got a truck coming, so you got to kind of be quick. So anyway, <laughs> fun times. So next up is going to be Space Quest 3, and I've got Windows uh, disk image files that I can use here on my Windows 10 PC to copy these over to three floppies, just as if I had uh, got it from the store. I did actually buy this from the store at one point, but uh, unfortunately, I have long since lost it. So we're going to write the image over here. And there it goes. So I'll probably take a couple minutes, so we'll do that for all three discs and pop them over here in the uh, Tandy 1000 and uh, enjoy some Space Quest. And it'll be cool to hear it's got a little bit better three-voice soundtrack than uh, what these other games that I've been playing do. So that'll be really cool to actually hear the three-voice sound chip at its best. So the other discs are still copying, but I've got disc one here ready to go. Let's make sure. Yep, everything looks like it came over correctly so while I'm waiting for those to copy over I can go ahead and hit install so let's see what this does here copyright 1988 the newest 3d adventures will provide you with superior graphics and sound but only if you correctly specify the hardware I'm gonna try my very best to correctly specify <laughs> Tandy 1000 with RGB monitor that would be us What's interesting is if you look, there's the PC Junior, which is, has the same basic graphics modes as the Tandy. So well, let's go ahead and select Tandy 1000. All right, now here's what's cool. 
a lot of people don't know this, the Tandy 1000, I'll be talking about this in my Tandy 1000 documentary uh, coming up hopefully here in the next couple months, but um, the original Tandy 1000 had the three voice speaker and uh, that was a great chip that was equal to what the IBM PC had, but the SL and TL, which is what we have, we have the TL2 down here, the actual SL and TL series had a uh, DAC or digital to uh, analog converter uh, so basically you could do digital sounds on the SL and the TL. So you get a few more options and a few more musical sound effects, which is really cool. And of course, there's also all the other uh, classic cards on here. I don't know, PC Music Feature Card. I'm not sure what that is. Of course, the Roland MT32 sounds incredible with this. I don't have one of those. AdLib was the most common option most people would have. And Casio Tone is actually a keyboard. So anyway, I'll hit SLTL and we'll see where we go from here. So it says, uh, these computers are capable of producing realistic sampled sound effects, but due to computer hardware limitations, joystick control is not available when these sounds are played. Oh, interesting. Okay. That's really cool. So we'll be able to do those realistic sampled sound effects though. And I don't have a joystick anyway, so that works just fine. All right. And so we're going to do, I have, actually, I don't have the, uh, the Tandy 1000 layout. This is actually the standard, um, it's almost like an IBM Model M keyboard, I believe, but it's a standard IBM keyboard layout, so that's good. The old Tandy 1000 keyboard, the original wasn't as great. It was pretty compressed compared to this more enhanced layout. So, let's see, make sure NumLock is off. Yep, yep, yep. Cool. Uh, nope, do not want to use the joystick. Yes, let's use the mouse. All right. So let's install on the hard drive. We'll push the C drive. See what happens here. Yeah, it's working really well. Oh, now it goes through like a, almost like a batch file. It looks like is what it's doing. That's pretty cool. Already on disc two. Just getting all the graphics and game files copied over here. And here's disc three. Just something about that floppy disc noise that's very satisfying. Looks like we're ready to rock and roll here. Here we go, let's see what happens. Well, that's interesting. It seems like it locked up, so let's see what's going on. I'm gonna try it with the mouse disabled. It seemed like it showed the mouse and then it hung up, so let's see if that will do it. Let's keep our fingers crossed here. If not, maybe I'll try the regular Tandy sound. That seems to be working. Ah, oh, there we go. Such a great soundtrack. Of course, this was cutting edge in 1989. Up the sound a little bit. Let's see if we hear any digital sound effects here. That would be characteristic of this SLTL version here. It's like he's being scanned. That kind of sounds like a digital sound effect. A high pitched sound. Oh no, we're being abducted. A classic caught in a tractor beam. It's considered to be nothing more than a piece of scrap. 
And I have to figure out how to get out of the garbage freighter. I never got very far in this game, but it's super fun. Wow, that's really cool, it's got speech. I didn't even know that it would actually have digital speech samples. Pretty incredible. Really cutting edge for 1989. Wow, that's pretty cool. So this version actually has the, you know, even speech on it, which for 1989 was totally cutting edge. Having served its purpose in Texas resources, the pod gets a final hum and shuts down. Yeah, that's actually pretty cool. Almost Sound Blaster-esque sound, blaster sound effects. Keeps trucking. Hopefully, you can still hear those sound effects. I talked over some of them, but still pretty amazing. I think if I walk down here, he falls off. Let's see. Oh gosh, you stepped up off a metallic escarpment and tumbled into darkness. <laughs> Cutting short your life in the process. Oh my goodness. Well, that's not good. I knew that would happen. I just wondered if there was a sound effect. Next time, don't get so close to the edge. <laughs> One of my goals is to figure out this game because I've never gotten very far on it. So we're going to go ahead and quit for now, but uh, super fun. Let's see. Oh, it has volume, sound off, speed. That's cool. All right. I'm going to quit for now. Leaving so soon, we'll be anxiously gone awaiting your next visit. <laughs> They're so excited. All right. Well, that's all for now for this unboxing video of some 720k floppy disks that haven't been opened in over 20 years that was pretty cool and playing some more games on my Tandy 1000 TL2 super fun and brings back really great memories I didn't remember a lot of that about Space Quest 3 with the uh, digital audio samples especially the speech uh, I don't know how much more uh, vocal recordings there are uh, of dialogue in the game so that'll be really cool to see if there's any more actual voice acting in the game, but uh, pretty cool that they fit all that onto three 720k floppy disks. So anyway, uh, again, make sure you subscribe. We're going to be doing a lot more cool stuff on this channel. Got a lot more unboxings, but also documentaries and more fun stuff coming up. So leave a comment, give me your best memories of some of these games, or let me know what you remember, because uh, it's always fun to reminisce together. And uh, just thanks for being a part of the community, and uh, thank you for uh, joining us for this video. So for now, Enjoy that tech and keep it retro.